Howdy, this is your real fake outsider General Manning Mark coming to you from the underground bunker system here at the Art Villa with a list of bitches, my daily list of bitches. Let's start with a bitch. Uh, <clears throat> got a local TV station here in town, and uh, I, you know who it is if you're local, but I'm not, you know, I'm not going to say who it is, but. They've always been, you know, they've had the same people working there forever. It's not like, um, you know, these most of these stations, they've got these kids that, you know, don't have any roots in the area, or if they or if they do, they don't, they're just talking heads, and they come out of school, and they just talk about the crap they got to talk about. Wait a minute. I think, I just brought this downstairs. It's got my latex gloves in it. <laughs> because sometimes I don't like to touch my own artwork so I put latex gloves on. This is a, it's called trench art. This is a, an, a British 18 pounder uh, with a, uh, a kangaroo and so I think it's Australian. It's probably made post-war, it was probably a factory made trench piece of trench art. But since I'm pouring my beer into it, my Bud Light Lime, which I really like. I'm going to drink it out of my uh, favorite vessel here for drinking beer. He, this last video, like apparently he's, well, see, you can't believe anything. So, <laughs> so everything's a storyline, right? Everything's made up. Or is it? That's the thing. You never know. Um, like I haven't had, he hasn't had a drink in two years, so he like takes a couple sips of beer, right? So that's, it, you know. so either he has a drinking problem and he's falling off the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> or he took two sips of beer, turned off the camera, and spit it out. I don't know. I got a complaint about beer in Kentucky. You don't think you're going to be paying more tax for everything? I heard today it was going to go up to 61% across the board from wherever it is now. And you people think you're going to get money from the government? <laughs> it ain't going to cover the new taxes, including because the states aren't getting any more money. They raised so I got to pay tax on beer now. Yay. Yay. Local TV station here in town. <laughs> they still have the same people, like I said, you know, talking heads. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of always felt comfortable watching because they didn't, you know, hire new people in all the time. And, and they didn't try to be youthful, you know. They didn't try to, they didn't follow the trends uh, in drama news as much as other stations that I'm familiar with. But they've been running these. They must have like a 12-year-old, well, a 14-year-old writing promotional material for them now. I don't know, about two or three months back, during Sweeps Week, they had this promotion about drug dealers. And they get this guy, this guy's voice, that says, drug dealers in town. Uh, you may be surprised who they are. They're baby gangsters. Baby gangsters. They ran that thing for like, I don't know, two weeks. It was highly annoying. Well, that wasn't the end of it. <clears throat> so today they've got this new promotion. Uh, about a, you know, it's probably not, it's only probably a mild trend, but they decided to inflate this thing to some kind of like dro this extra drama. And you know, you would think that I would like that because, you know, when you're here, Using video would create motion and drama. It would be a good thing, but no! It's the news! It's the news! Jesus Christ, if you watched a news broadcast from the early 60s, you would have, it would, it would be so much, it would shock you. It would be shock you how different it is because, you know, everything's always stilted and it's always yellow, but it was more just news instead of drama. So today's drama is are females arming themselves, learning how to shoot. How many times has that story been done? You've seen it before. But the guy comes on with the voice and he says, armed and female. <sighs> okay, Does that, what does that mean? Does that mean women have no place arming themselves to protect themselves? It's kind of like turning them into clowns somehow, like some kind of airheaded clowns. They shouldn't be armed. Well, because everybody has a right to protect themselves. Because the world is not safe. And like I've said before, no government is going to step up and protect you from 
a crazy person with whatever they've got in their hands. So you might as well protect yourself. You have to protect yourself. Oh, but what if somebody grabs a gun away from you? Well, at least up until that point, you had a chance to protect yourself. And the other thing I've always liked is, well, if somebody broke in your house, wouldn't you just, you know, talk to them? Well, no. Or wouldn't you just like kind of arm, shoot, uh, aim for an arm or leg? Well, no. I'm going to take a shotgun with slug in it, and I'm going to shoot you right in the chest, the biggest target I can hit probably two or three times until you're dead on the ground, motionless. You know, it's, you're not playing around, folks. And the people that are in your house that want to do harm to you, they're not thinking like you think. Do you understand? You're applying the dynamics of your life and your social situation and how you want to treat people to this, these nuts that are going to do you harm. Er, okay. Hey, I haven't been like on a rant in a while. That felt pretty good. What else do we have here? Serious. Oh, speak. <laughs> Got to get serious now. <clears throat> this is this. I was. I've been mulling this thing over. Where you know, I'm doing this. This you know, like this crazy crackpot shit. And uh, and you see other people doing this crazy crackpot shit. And you wonder where the line is and and who these people are and why they do this. But you know, and and this you know. It's interesting to watch people, including myself, do this kind of stuff because you can see this line where you want to be, it's, it's like you want to be taken seriously for your art, even if it's like insanity, right? You want to be taken seriously for the insanity that you create. So when you do this stuff, that's supposedly marketing, I don't know, I don't <laughs> If it starts working for me, I'll know. Right now, I don't. But it's the line, you know. It's like they go to this, they go to this point, and they don't cross over it because I think in their heads it's like, well, if I cross over whatever that line is in your head, then people won't take me seriously anymore, or they'll think that I am, a, a, you know, a, a nutcase. But I think that you already are. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just trying to keep the screws screwed down on the pressure cooker, you know? So it it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You ought to just have fun. Uh, but the thing is, I don't drink anymore. And I tried my whole life to become an alcoholic, and it just didn't work. And here I am having a beer because summer's rolled around, and it just it's something about, like, warm days and relaxed muscles, and it, it, I feel like having a beer. But I just, I don't know, you know? Like, I went flat out drinking all summer, last summer. And then I just stopped in October. And I've probably had, I don't know, a case, couple cases of beer since then, which for me is pretty damn good. It's almost nothing. Wait, pop psychology. Where's my book on pop psychology? It's got to be around here somewhere. I'm going to finish this beer. Mm. Uh, you know, if he is actually falling off the wagon, then, you know, Red and I, we should have this uh, drinking contest where there's no editing. So in that case, you know, within 10 minutes, we would have to drink as many beers as we possibly could. Um, Maybe there should be editing. I don't know. Maybe you should pour a beer and drink it and turn the camera off. That's it. And it should be like, ah, but there's got to be some kind of time thing. Because you could like get up the next day and wear the same clothes, which I do frequently because I don't like to have to get up in the morning, you know, without being dressed because it takes too much time. You just get into the day. So that should be this drinking thing, you know. And it's probably, of course, it's been done before. I had this idea, this other idea. There's this other fellow on Red Mud. He's a real folk artist. And, uh, his name's Red Mud, and he's a, he's a pretty nice guy and does excellent artwork, and he's pretty funny, too. He's got a wicked sense of humor. You should check him out. But I don't pay attention to anything else. What do I know? Everything's been done before, no matter what is in your head that you think you'd like to do. It's all been done before. Uh, but it should be done again. <laughs> we should have this drinking challenge. And Chicken George, if he's out there, he's in the desert. See, the thing is, he could, like, drink. Since he's, like, this, like, horrible alcoholic, or her alcoholic, he could, and he's in the desert. I mean, what kind of challenge is that? He drinks one beer and it's like evaporates instantly, right? So I don't even know if we can include him. <laughs> I have no idea. I'll just do it myself. Yay! <clears throat> Woohoo! Oh, somebody at the door. I gotta go do some backhoe work. Yep. It says in the manual to drink and then operate heavy machinery. I think I've got that right. I'm pretty sure I do. Thanks, folks.